I'm energized and ready to continue serving as the 20th Ward Alderman with courage, dedication, vision, and experience. It took courage for me to stand up for taxpayers in the face of special interests, to get local control of the police department and the firefighter pension fund, and saving seven to $10 million per year. In a very diverse ward with many competing interests, I spend 50 to 60 hours per week for city services, meetings, legislation, cutting through dysfunctional government, and I work to balance the interests of businesses and residents for quality of life. A new alderman would be number 28 out of 28. I am one of a handful in a leadership role, likely to be shared in an important committee. That's important not only for the city as a whole, but to the ward because it means more access to city services in our ward. Crime statistics go up and down in our neighborhoods. In 2013, robberies in Gravoy Park were down over 46% and are now up but still below 2012 levels. I will not rest as long as there are any crime victims. The city and we all need to be more proactive. I work to get Marquette Park Recreation Center open on Saturdays, Youth at Risk grants to local youth programs. I helped open new schools and reopen old schools. I have uh, constantly worked on our nuisance behavior properties. Uh, I have supported uh, job opportunities for disadvantaged workers. I help to keep this facility open. After more than 50 years, we are renovating the field house. In 2001, as a more junior alderman, I was legally redistricted out of the ward. We didn't get any housing money. When I came back, we got housing money. And the St. Louis Business Journal recognized us as one of the hot uh, markets for housing. I got over 1.4 million in stimulus funds for Cherokee Street. As we close in on the reduction in the number of aldermen, having gone through a nasty redistricting as a junior alderman, I want to be here to represent your interests in the Thank 20th you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kara Spencer, for those of you who don't know me, I'm not a politician. In fact, I'm a mathematician. Uh, I'm also a mom. Um, I was born down here on the south side. I own my house. I work here in the 20th Ward. Uh, I'm raising my family here. I serve on the boards of our uh, Marineville Neighborhood Association as well as the Chippewa Broadway Business Association. I love St. Louis. I'm committed to the 20th Ward and I want to make it a better place. The 20th Ward is surrounded by, sound, by signs of success. Uh, however, the ward itself is languishing behind neighboring wards and behind the region as a whole in most measurable accounts. We have a citywide reputation for being unfriendly to small businesses. Our crime here is increasing while it is decreasing citywide. People are leaving our ward 28% faster than they're leaving the city of St. Louis. We have more vacant city-owned properties than any ward on the south side. And our voter turnout rate is the lowest in the entire city. This is not a coincidence. It is the result of legislation and decisions that discourage small business, private investment, and community engagement. We are being held back by outdated ideas and by an old-fashioned way of doing things. It's time for a change. The 20th Ward needs a new approach. For 12 of the last 13 years, I've done mathematical modeling for the pharmaceutical industry. I traveled around the world and uh, taking complex data and boiling it down to, to make informed decisions. At the end of the day, I'm a problem solver. And what I see down here in the 20th floor are problems that we're not addressing. I'm so committed to solving these problems that I'm decided to campaign for the opportunity to do so. I've learned a lot along the way and most of which I've learned from listening to you and I will continue to do so and I look forward to the opportunity to do it. Thank you. All right, we have lots and lots of questions, as I said. I think what I'm going to do is kind of start with those close to home, and then we'll move around geographically, if you will. All right? Um, Ms. Spencer, if you would answer our first question first, and this one is, if you have other employment than being an alderman, how would you avoid conflict of interest situations? And I'm going to team that up with another one that says, do you intend to be full-time or do you have other jobs? So what is your approach going to be, full-time alderman, or are you going to be working on other things? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure how uh, the next year will play out for my employment, uh, but I am open to working <coughs> part-time in addition to being an alderman. Uh, that's not to say that I will for sure, uh, but 
As far as conflicts of interest, uh, my current employer, uh, Southside Spaces and Nebula Coworking, um, I think that the, um, the goals of these organizations are very much in line with the goals of the entire board. Uh, we bring, uh, we've brought over 50 new businesses to the 20th Ward. Uh, that's just with Southside Spaces. At Nebula Coworking, we've, we've brought in 100 uh, small businesses and entrepreneurs that feed our small businesses that go out to eat. They patronize our small businesses. It's a, it, 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 the, the work that we've done and that I have done for the last year um, has been very much in line with the goals of, of our board. Uh, so I, as far as the conflict of interest, I think uh, what I would do is introduce transparency, um, disclose all board capital funds and make sure everyone knows Yes, I've been a full-time alderman. I was a uh, lawyer practicing law. Also did some teaching uh, at night at St. Louis University in the law school. And I've been a full-time alderman working 50 or 60 hours a week. So I'm not on anybody's payroll. Um, and I am completely dedicated to the 20th board. Thank you. Question number two. Thank you. Thank you. It's very important that we work on infrastructure. We've been doing a lot of that, as I indicated in my opening statement. Uh, we were able to give $1.4 million to Cherokee Street. I did work in years past on South Broadway when we had uh, the ability to get some federal funding to work on South Broadway. Uh, we need to continue to work with other groups. That includes uh, those who are on the various uh, business districts. Uh, they are familiar with uh, the many uh, businesses that are there. We also have uh, Peterson Housing that does a lot of sorts of grants and uh, other uh, loans for uh, various businesses. It's very helpful to be, uh, as I have always been, open and transparent about what we're looking for. And that is for a synergy, working together of businesses and residents so businesses have a tremendous, wonderful impact upon the community, and also residents need to expect that they will be responsible businesses that are there, and everybody knows up front. Mason, a concern in the 20th Ward. Uh, the 20th Ward only issued two tax abatements this last year, um, whereas uh, many other wards issued a lot more. Uh, tax abatement <coughs> is a tool that allows developers to bridge the gap between what it costs to develop a property and what it might be worth in the of that community. In the 20th Ward, we do have a big gap. Unfortunately, our fully renovated houses aren't worth the same as they are in other parts of the city. So we need tax abatement to make to encourage uh, developers to come down here and to give them a financial incentive to do so. I think that in the 20th Ward, we should uh, have more than we have in other wards. In fact, we have less. I don't know where the two came from. I'm sure I did that in one meeting. We did the two tax abatements, so there's been more than that. I, I didn't bring a number of that with me. Uh, I would also indicate that LRA is basically a placeholder. They are not designed, unless we want to pay more taxes to keep the buildings up, so they are a placeholder. They're not the city of St. Louis. What I did creatively is take 33 of those buildings out of LRA's hands. We got some of these buildings from foreclosures so that we can, can have developers come in and they can redevelop these properties with um, tax, uh, tax credits. Um, you know, uh, tax abatement, yes. Well, you know, you shouldn't give tax abatement unless those properties would not otherwise be developed. And so there may be projects from time to time that I think in the city of St. Louis that that happens. It is not happening in the 20th Ward that we are doing it to impact our schools negatively. In fact, we need more tax abatement, uh, and we give it whenever we can for these wonderful projects that come in. Are you allowed to ask a question? You could ask for clarification. Am I just allowed to ask a question? And, and we suggest that you, if you uh, want to add more information, you do it in closing remarks. No, am I allowed to ask a question? Right. Uh, some of these issues and some money, but we're going to go to another hot topic. 
police and firefighter pensions. And this, I believe, is Mr. Schnitzler's. What is your position on police and firefighter pension reform? Well, I support reform. Unfortunately, uh, we have no ability to reform the police pensions at all. That's strictly by the state. And um, the uh, courts have indicated that we were correct that we do have the ability to have local control over the firefighter pension. We want to make sure that they have a really good, uh, vital pension, but going forward, we need to make sure that um, those pension benefits are determined locally and by all of us and not by somebody in Kansas City. Do you have any clarification on that? This is a, talking about the way the law works in the city. Oh, sure. So, um, you know, our our firefighters and our police force, they, they serve us. You know, they are the people that come. You know, our firefighters are our first responders in the times of emergencies, and our police force keep us safe. And so, um, while it's important to keep our city's budget in check, uh, when we make promises to people, that we depend on to keep us safe, we need to keep those promises. And um, and I think that's a very, very key part to any pension reform. Okay, we'll leave that subject for now. There are a number of um, <coughs> specific issues, and I'm just kind of going <coughs> through these for information, and then we'll go back to some of the bigger ones, okay? And I believe Ms. Duncan, you did yours first. And these are um, just various issues going on. You may or may not have experience with them, either one of you, so we'll see. The first one is about the Marquette Pool. The Marquette Pool is important to the youth in this area. When will it reopen? That's a good question. As far as I know, as a resident of the Point Ford, I wasn't even aware that it was closing this last year. It was a huge disappointment to me. I know my son and I went to the pool almost every other weekend. We had many many children around here depended on that as one of their only places to play in the summertime. Uh, I don't know when it plans to reopen, but I have been working with the president of our board of all the members we uh, to make sure that it's included in the bond issue so that we can put the money necessary to the renovation of, of the pool so that we can reopen it. It's, a, it's one of three public open pools in the city of St. Louis. We're incredibly lucky to have it in the 20th Ward, and I think we need to prioritize reopening it. And certainly, if anything, if any pool or any public facility ever plans to close, I think it should be a priority of our aldermen to let us know beforehand and why, why it's closed. Well, I don't know who all has the ability to start uh, working on bond issues other than the Board of Aldermen, and that's what we're doing. And I have uh, tried to work with the President of the Board of Aldermen and others to put that pool in, as well as the balance pool. The pool was done in 1958. Uh, they didn't ask me to close the pool. It collapsed. The pipes collapsed. So I put together a committee to try to look for additional funding in addition to the uh, bond issue. Uh, representative of the Urban League, the Strong City, Strong Communities, which tries to cut through the red tape uh, with the federal government, a representative from the mayor's office, an individual who has done uh, work with other uh, public pools who is now with Better Together, a man by the name of Wilson, uh, representative from the Board of Aldermen, and we're going to continue to look for additional funding to do this. The amount of money is about $3 million. Um, so that doesn't come very easily. I've tried to put together some monies that might be available to put in as a match to try to do that. So we don't know how quickly that will happen, but it's a priority. Okay, thank you. This one is about um, the street plan. So basically we have an old city and a lot of this infrastructure has been around for a long time. The street administrator is responsible for the way that the sidewalks and the street layouts and so forth are. However, you as residents, constituents of the various wards also have a say so. So individuals do do petitions from time to time 
Uh, and those are considered by the all the people and they're also considered by the, the street administrators. We have over time, because uh, folks have been concerned about various issues in their community, had a number of uh, streets that are going <coughs> one way in various ways. So my intent is um, after April is to come back and work with the street administrator to look at all those and try to have a reasonable plan to look at those with the residents to make sure that the whole plan makes sense. Each individual one makes sense, but sometimes taken collectively, they don't all make sense. So that's the question. Thank you. I'm assuming most of you all drove here, rode a bike here, because it's very cold outside today. I know I drove here, uh, and any, as, as with any time I drive into 24, I end up extremely frustrated with these one-way streets. They are everywhere. They prevent us from getting anywhere efficiently, effectively. It is completely ridiculous how this ward, the streets are laid out down here. And I know that individuals who live on streets have had input and asked for one-way streets to be put in. And in some cases, that might make sense. But in general, this ward's road structure is completely insane. Nobody likes driving through the Twentieth Ward. I don't like driving through the Twentieth Ward. I have hated canvassing specifically because the roads are one way facing each other, going every other way. I can't imagine how this could possibly be good for anybody. There's study after study that shows that one way streets decrease home values, increase crime, and increase speed that people travel. Well, let's make sure I get the right Hotspot policing is helpful if you have community-oriented police officers who are out there introducing themselves to the uh, residents uh, of the area. Also, we have uh, tried to work in a more progressive uh, effort to get focus services all the time, and that needs to go along with the police work. I don't know where we get the idea that one-way streets decrease home values or increase crime. I will tell you that there are still people asking for one-way streets. We need to make sure that we're working with the, uh, the streets administrator. Uh, I am committed to working with the police department. It's one of the reasons why we need the seven to ten million dollars to get the additional police officers that we're looking for. Uh, hot spots is helpful temporarily, but we really need to have a longer range uh, effort, and that includes all of you. We continue to do all these things with the neighborhood accountability board and the uh, non-neighborhood oriented um, efforts for um, uh, reviewing the uh, uh, work in, in the neighborhood. Thank I you. did not introduce no lawyer in my discussion. Okay, new topic. And this goes to Mr. Smith. All right. Do you support a liquor moratorium in the 20th Ward? If so, why are the current possessors, no, I'm sorry, why are the current processes to obtain and keep a liquor license not enough? Are you aware the state liquor laws prevent a local option to bar the sales of packaged liquor? Ah, the state law prevents preventing. Okay? I'm not sure. <laughs> Are you aware of the state liquor laws preventing a local option to bar it? There's, it's, and it's listed here, state liquor control 
311.170.1. Oh, okay, so they, so they believe that somebody was trying to bar the ability of the local area to, to stop. Stop, yes. Okay, <clears throat> so I have never been in support of a pro, uh, moratorium or prohibition. What I've supported is uh, having uh, reasonable uh, conditions to deal with some of the issues that come about <coughs> with uh, rivers. There are 10 uh, wards throughout the city that have um, limits on package liquor and other parts of um, liquor. So the issue is to try to make sure, just as they do in the University of the City, uh, in the loop, uh, that they have at least 50% food and that they deal with some of the issues that come up. I am certainly happy to work with the neighbors uh, to have the standards established by the community, but we can't put our heads in the sand and believe that there are not issues that are there. there um, and we need to work together to try to make sure that those are taken care of. We want to make sure that we have responsibility on the part of the residents and the, those businesses <coughs> and that um, we have transparency and everybody knows what the standards are up front. So the legislation that was brought to the Board of Aldermen in November was called a liquor moratorium. And, <coughs> okay. and so um, following that, because there was no transparency, as Craig just suggested, uh, the neighborhood associations and the business associations got together and asked Alderman Schmidt if he would in fact gather uh, us together to have input and transparency on this legislation that was brought to City Hall on behalf of the entire 20th Ward uh, uh, without any communication with any organizations whatsoever. Uh, I do believe that there are uh, that there is a need for transparency across the board, but specifically with this liquor moratorium, uh, we need to have input. There are laws in place that give a 350-foot radius so that residents and business owners can have an input on whether or not a business should open. Uh, we don't need to have overly restrictive policies, and we certainly do need to include and inform all of our residents and our organ business and neighborhood associations on legislation before we want to city hall. Thank you very much.
on the same general concern area with Metrolink. What can you do to support and encourage the neighborhood resident associations to facilitate more residents? So that's $221,000 in more capital funds to, to fix our alleys, put in lights, and do things like that. Right now, uh, we have no idea what that money is being used for. As far as I understand, uh, there's been almost no transparency. Our neighborhood associations, our business associations have asked what those war capital monies go towards. There's only one member of the board of Albany, to my knowledge, who disposes all of that money within the Scott Ogilvy. He puts on his website every single Thanksgiving year, every single dollar spent from war capital funds. I, follow to, I plan to follow suit and do exactly just that. I'd like to be very transparent and so we can have <coughs> an, an illicit input from the community on all those expenditures and then be held accountable for them. I think we should be. So I go to all the neighborhood organization meetings um, uh, as, as I possibly can. Um, I get all this information from people who talk to me. Obviously people see the papers that are out there Every year we're asked to put uh, money into dumpsters. I absolutely do that. We want to make sure that uh, they are happy and that they're keeping our dumpsters in good shape. Paving, sidewalks, lights, buildings, trying to put side, uh, aside money for pools and for the parks and for the trees and for everything that is a capital improvement basically goes through that funding. Um, I'm not aware that Scott Ogilvy is doing anything more than any of the other aldermen are doing. I will tell you that uh, there is a process of participatory democracy uh, where people can uh, contact the alderman, and I always encourage people to do that. We work with folks to do that. Uh, I have told people where the money is going in terms of the park improvements and all the rest of the things that I've outlined here. Okay. Um, <coughs> sort of a philosophical question, specific to you all. So the field house right now, which has been closed for 50 years right across the street, um, is at the area where we have the soccer fields, rugby fields, and the Latin American soccer league, um, and the uh, Saturday morning uh, uh, rugby club. And so uh, this will be available as we continue on with our efforts to try to make sure that we have programming for youth and for the families. Uh, many years ago, I was told uh, that you know, we have a gap basketball court upstairs has not been used for these 50 years. Uh, we have a lot of uh, rooms that are there available for um, programming, and it's available for parties and events uh, that the neighborhood could have. That's just one thing, obviously. Anything that we do in the parks, anything that we do with the schools, and I've been big on doing that, we will continue to do. Revitalizing our street grid, uh, starting with the Jefferson Broadway intersection, Driving that is in my <coughs> It's preventing uh, a lot of development going down Jefferson, down into Chippewa. Having an economic development plan that includes our commercial districts and our residential uh, neighborhoods. Thinking long term about our community is a transformative idea that hasn't been implemented, in my opinion, in this community. So I think we need to open up our street grid involve all residents in all conversations about how our uh, neighborhoods are laid out, <coughs> redesigning that street at, Cher at Chippewa and Jefferson, opening up the firehouse to the public, <coughs> including all residents and all dialogue about all of the resources that belong to us as residents. Okay. Specifically, someone mentioned the parks. This question deals with that. Well, sir. We all know that the city rec centers are overstaffed and underutilized. What are your specific plans and ideas to make changes in the rec centers? Well, I think that funding for the rec centers should certainly be included in the bond issue that will be coming up this spring. Uh, I think that maybe we meant to say they were understaffed because it's my experience. 
here because we are certainly understaffed and underutilized. Uh, we need to have programming uh, at our community centers that work in, in concert with our schools. Um, I, I think we need to have a tremendous amount of just of, of, of funding towards our, uh, our community centers. Um, you know, at, with, with, you know, here at Marquette Park, we have a great community center right next door. I mean, even, even just outside of our ward at Cherokee Rec Center is a fantastic facility that we really need to just put money towards and put a priority towards. If you want to see a great example of how to leverage what you already have, I think it's important that we look here. Obviously, we have the great Marquette Recreation Center, but too often, uh, as adults, we make uh, youth kind of follow the adult schedule. Frankly, I don't see why someone would be working at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning if the youth are in school. So some of our scheduling should be based on that as well. Um, we leverage some of the efforts here in, in, in Marquette Park uh, by having this facility here. There were some efforts by members of the board who wanted to close down this facility and use the money for scholarships. Uh, I did not support that. I believe that this is a major effort to try to build on that. Uh, doing the field house and the other facilities that are available here in Montana. So we need to um, work on what we already have and make it uh, better than it has been uh, and work with the schedule that we use in the family as opposed to the schedule that's uh, being applied now. This is a look at our challenges, which I have to do on a daily basis, that we're also clear that this is one of the best areas that you can possibly live in. When you look around, you see not only wonderful people who are the backbone of, uh, of our community, but you, we have a great deal of diversity other than economics within this ward. We need to point out, as the uh, market value analysis has done, that we have a lot of strength areas that we can build upon in this neighborhood. We have these intact buildings some of which are beginning to languish around the edges, but that we need to keep and preserve. I've tried to do some uh, efforts to try to, to uh, preserve those buildings so that they would be in a position for redevelopment. But we need to be out there, and the neighbors and the neighborhood are some of the best people to do that to make sure that everyone knows that this is a great place for them to come. Nobody wants to come to a place where folks are constantly complaining and saying, Woe is me, everything is terrible, this is a lousy place. It isn't, it's a wonderful place and we need to make sure that we know that. So for our residents, um, we need to first fix our crime issue. Uh, I received a really heartwarming message from a neighbor uh, after I announced my candidacy here. He reached out and said, I've lived here for 10 years. My own family won't come and visit me because I live in a pocket in our ward, very, very high crime. I'm afraid to sit on my front porch at night. I'm afraid to walk down the street after dusk. This is a serious problem that we have in many parts of our ward. Many of us are good neighbors. We look out for each other. We take care of one another. But there are very many pockets of extreme high crime throughout our ward. So I think tackling that is going to be an important piece. But also just facilitating and working with new residents, creating and helping to make exciting and dynamic things come to our ward instead of being restrictive about them. Things like Indy Hop, Cinco de Mayo, festivals that make people excited to live in the city and specifically down here on the 20th Ward. Thank you and continuing with that topic, what is going to be done about the vacant buildings which increase the crime rate? I couldn't agree more. Vacant buildings are a key part of the high crime rates we have. And in fact, we have more vacant city-owned properties than any ward on the south side, and our vacancy rate is 50% higher than city-wide averages. We need to collect uh, people who are interested in developing down here and work with and coordinate the efforts of developers and residents who want to live down here. We need to take it block by block, and we need to be very careful about how we do it, but we need to be open and have creative ideas including our immigrant populations and people that are uh, not right, you know, not being supported currently. Um, and so uh, our vacant properties are a vital part of fixing our crime rates and fixing our economy and helping, you know, we spend so much money just mowing the lawns and we need to be spending that money uh, securing the buildings, putting roofs on them, making sure they don't fall down. 
So vacant buildings are, are opportunities. If you want to develop in Wildwood or in Chesterfield, you look for vacant ground. If you want to look for opportunities in this neighborhood, just as people did like 40 years ago in Lafayette Square or in Soulard, you're going to look at those vacant buildings. We could make a decision that we're just going to wholesale do this urban renewal like a lot of places in town, Mill Creek and so forth, and screw people out and knock all these buildings down, but that's not the effort that we're engaged in here. One of the creative things that I did is took 33 buildings out of potential LRA inventory and we had them available for block grants so that they could be redeveloped by its developers. And we continue to um, work with folks who are going to do things that are good with these uh, vacant buildings. We want to make sure that they have the capability of doing it. Okay, one more question about housing, and then we'll move on to different topics. And Mr. Schmidt, you take this one. What, if anything, can you do about the slumlords? So what many of our slumlords we deal with in our uh, nuisance property efforts. So, I have never met an owner of property who considers himself or herself a slumlord. Uh, however, there are many of them, as we well know, uh, and, and everybody has a right to own property, but maybe they don't uh, manage it very well, maybe they don't see any tenants. Uh, so the best way to try to deal with that is, is to make sure that we are uh, uh, dealing with it from the nuisance property angle. That requires all of the neighbors to try to get involved and make sure that they are turning these properties in to the police department, to the neighborhood stabilization officer, and to me. We then can ratchet those things up in terms of sending letters from the public safety director to the owners. We can go as far as uh, going to an administrative hearing, closing down the property. Uh, they still have to pay the taxes, and they're supposed to keep it uh, maintained well, but they could be closed for up to a year. So that's one of the major things that we do. We also try to work with landlords to get them the help that they need to manage their properties. Our neighborhood associations to take problem properties and um, problem landlords, not to municipal court, but directly <coughs> to circuit court. This will enable neighborhood associations to threaten jail time for absentee landlords. These are new initiatives that we would like to fund this in our neighborhood. We'd like to be at the very cutting edge of dealing with problem properties and problem landlords instead of, you know, just only utilizing the tools that have been uh, used in the past. So I think you